There are other ways to reduce carbonyls to alcohols. One of these uses hydrogen gas, because if we look, this carbon-oxygen double bond looks like a double bond. It is a double bond. And we can imagine removing one of the bonds, making room, and adding a hydrogen on one side, a hydrogen on the other. So in a sense, a reduction of a carbonyl is an addition of a molecule of hydrogen to that molecule. So we can use hydrogen gas with an appropriate metal catalyst in this case, we use the catalyst rainy nickel, which is essentially a solid nickel surface that's been treated. Essentially, you can just write rainy nickel. We're not going to provide a mechanism for this reaction. We're now going to look at a whole class of reactions that use what are called organometallics. We're going to see organometallics of various types in other parts of this semester. This is the first time we see it, and the ones we're going to look at here are, I would say, the most commonly used organometallic reagents that exist. Organometallic reagents are compounds that have carbon groups directly attached to metals. So they're a combination of an organic molecule with carbon and a metal. The first two widely studied organometallic reagents were the Grignard reagent, which was discovered and studied by a scientist named Victor Grignard, who won the Nobel Prize for his work in this area, and the organolithium reagent. The Grignard reagent is called an organomagnesium compound because the metal is magnesium metal. It's made by mixing an alkyl halide, Rx, where X is equal to chlorine, bromine, or iodide, with magnesium metal. Again, we're using our notation here where if we have no charge on our metal symbol, it has uh, no uh, ionic charge, that makes it the elemental metal. So magnesium zero. What we see in this reaction then is that we make a, a product which has an R minus together with a magnesium two plus together with a halide minus. This is often written with covalent bonds here because we're going to see that the carbon to magnesium bond is actually probably not ionic. It's probably a very polar covalent. But we're also going to see that it behaves as if that was a negative carbon ion. We generally use diethyl ether or a related solvent, THF, tetrahydrofuran, as the solvents for this reaction. In fact, many of these completely require diethyl ether. The actual reagent is a complex molecule that has diethyl ether as part of its structure. Writing the solvent is not required, but you are going to see the solvent written very often since it is such uh, an important part of the practical use of this reagent. Organolithium reagents are actually often prepared in um, solvents like hexane. To make an organolithium reagent, we use a carbon group with a halogen attached, and we put in two equivalents, or two molar equivalents of lithium metal. At the end, we're going to get carbon minus lithium, which is an extremely polar covalent bond right on the edge of being ionic. Plus, we're going to get a mo molecule of lithium halide, and that turns out actually to have implications when you actually try to use these. The one thing I want to point out is that um, the magnesium metal, each atom will give us two electrons. And effectively, if we look, those two electrons on the carbon are probably the two electrons from the magnesium. The reason then why we have to use two equivalents of lithium is that each lithium will only give us one electron. 
So in order to get the two electrons we need for the carbon minus, we need two equivalents of lithium. We're now going to look at some of the properties of organometallics before we look at how they react to make alcohols. What we see in organometallic compounds is that the carbon groups behave like carbon negative ions, carbon anions. And in fact, we have a name for carbon negative ions. We call them carb anions. Carb anions are extremely strong bases and they're very reactive nucleophiles. If we look, for example, at the organomagnesium molecule, we can see that if the carbon had a covalent bond to magnesium, the magnesium has a very low electronegativity, carbon is in the middle, there would be a polarity arrow pointing from the magnesium toward the carbon, meaning that the carbon would have a large partial negative charge and the magnesium would have a large partial positive charge. We call that a polar covalent bond. What we see is that this bond is so polarized that it's just a few percent away from being this, where they are two completely separate species, carbon having essentially 100% of a negative charge. In the Grignard reagent, it's probably closer to 80 to 90%, but it's a very large amount of negative charge. When we look on the pKa table, we see that carbon anions are essentially the strongest bases on our table. If we look in the right-hand base column, they are literally at the very bottom of that column. Because they are such strong bases, they are extremely reactive with anything that even has the slightest acidity. That's going to put limitations on their use. We can't, for example, mix them with water or alcohols, or amines, or sulfides, which have sulfur to hydrogen bonds, because those strong bases will very rapidly do acid-base reaction with the OH, with the SH, with the NH. That's going to place a hydrogen onto that carbon, making it no longer a negative carbanion, and thereby not allowing it to react as we want it to. So effectively, water and other acidic substances destroy Grignard reagents. And in fact, when we do Grignard reagents in the lab, we have to take steps to minimize their exposure to water. We can, however, take advantage of this acidity by using organometallics like alkyl lithiums, Grignard reagents, to deprotonate weak acids. Things like terminal alkynes. Terminal alkynes have a pKa of 25, which makes them acidic, much more acidic than an, uh, an alkane, for example, but not a super strong acid like water or sulfuric acid. If we mix a terminal alkyne with N-butyl minus lithium plus, which we abbreviate N-butyl lithium, N-butyl, you may recall from last semester, is the common name of the straight butyl chain. It's the normal butyl chain. If we mix them together, the strong base, butyl minus ion, will come over and remove a hydrogen from the terminal alkyne. The pair of electrons in the carbon-hydrogen bond will go onto the alkyne carbon, and we will get an acetylide negative ion which would pair up with our counter ion, which is lithium. This is often called a lithium acetylide, in contrast to sodium acetylide, which we saw in our previous chapter. The byproduct of this is N-butyl attached to hydrogen, which essentially makes it butane, an alkane. One of the advantages of this acid-base reaction is that the conjugate acid product here is a gas at room temperature. And so if we run it or we allow it to warm to room temperature, the butane gas will evaporate away and essentially we will not have any reagents available to go in the reverse direction. We're now going to look at 
how we can use organometallic reagents to synthesize alcohols. When you look at this section, I caution you to pay attention to the little marks, what we call primes, on our carbon symbols R. Those marks are there to very clearly indicate that one carbon group does not have to be identical to another carbon group. We're first going to, we're going to look at four observed reactions overall. You can see them here. I'm going to put the, uh, the first three as a group. We can react organometallic reagents with aldehydes or ketones. Aldehydes and ketones are actually very, very similar molecules in their structure. The main difference being the number of hydrogens that are directly attached to the carbonyl carbon. The, the first one we're going to look at is formaldehyde, which has two hydrogen groups directly attached to the carbonyl carbon. There are no carbon groups directly attached because there's no room for a carbon group. The carbon with two bonds to oxygen, two bonds to hydrogen, has its complete complement of four bonds. If we use formaldehyde, <clears throat> what's going to happen is we're going to make a bond from the carbon group to the central carbon of the formaldehyde. We're going to reduce the number of bonds between the carbon and oxygen, and we're going to protonate on the oxygen. So we make a molecule that looks like this. If we look back at our classification of alcohols, this is a molecule that has an alcohol carbon with only one carbon group directly attached, that would be a primary alcohol. If we use any other aldehyde than formaldehyde, that aldehyde is going to have one hydrogen and one carbon group already attached. When we use our Grignard reagent, we would then attach a second carbon group, we would make a single bond and a hydrogen. If we look at our alcohol carbon, that would have our original carbon group from the aldehyde plus our second carbon group from the Grignard reagent, it would be a secondary alcohol. If we use a ketone, what we, what we would have to begin with is we would have two carbon groups that could be completely different from each other. So for example, this could be a methyl, that could be a phenyl group. The Grignard carbon group could be different from those two. So we have three different possible carbon groups we could have attached to our central carbon at the end. Two carbon groups at the beginning, we add our third one on, we make our single bond with the hydrogen. That's gonna be a tertiary alcohol. So we can make a primary, secondary, or tertiary alcohol. We can also do this reaction on esters. Esters have one carbon group directly attached and then an alkoxy group attached on the other side. When we do this reaction, what we see is that the alkoxy group leaves. It's broken off from that molecule. We add two carbon groups and we make an alcohol. <clears throat> but those two carbon groups are actually going to be identical. <clears throat> so we're going to need two equivalents of our alkyl, I'm sorry, of our organometallic, and we're going to end up with a tertiary alcohol, but the tertiary alcohol will have two identical carbon groups. We're now going to look at the mechanism of the organometallic reaction. Again, this is probably, probably should be considered a formal mechanism. This is going to be a formal mechanism because, as I pointed out earlier, our organometallic reagent is probably not a completely ionic reagent, but we're going to draw the ionic form of this reagent just so that we can better understand the electron movement. If we look at our mechanism then, it's actually quite similar to the mechanism of our hydride reductions. We have a carbonyl carbon with a partial positive charge, attracting to it a carbon group with a negative charge. The carbon group will come over and make a bond to that positive charge. 
and then a pair of electrons will be pushed out of the way onto the oxygen. So we will end up with an intermediate that looks like this. Carbon, or sorry, organometallic carbon group attached to our central carbon, negatively charged oxygen alkoxide. Again, the metal ions in this reaction are just going to move around to pair up with whatever species has a negative charge. So for example, if we were using a Grignard reagent where we had a magnesium two plus and a halide minus, we would have the magnesium two plus associated with this and also a halide minus. To complete the reaction, what we need to do is remove the metal counter ion and replace it with a bond to hydrogen. This is often called a hydrolysis step for several reasons. First, we typically use water to accomplish this. Second, what we consider is that we're sort of cutting the oxygen to metal bond. The Greek term or Latin uh, suffix for cutting is lysis. So we're doing cutting with water. In a practical sense, what we typically use for this is aqueous acid, which would be something like six molar hydrochloric acid or dilute sulfuric acid. It's essentially going to be a species that provides us with hydronium aqueous ion. The negative charged oxygen will act like a base, deprotonate the hydronium, you'll get a molecule of water, and you'll get your final product. This is summarized in this statement below.